And thank you, uh, Mr. Michaels, for, for talking to us. As I was telling you before, I represent the city of Miami, where we have thousands of Nicaraguans, thousands of Cubans and Venezuelans. And we are very concerned as to what's happening in those countries that are being led by thugs, tyrants, specifically Nicaragua. You know about this. Uh, seven presidential contenders are under trial in a kangaroo court, and some of them are facing treason, charges for treason and, and for terrorism. In Cuba, 55 children less than 18 years old are facing all, up to 30 years in prison just for shouting libertad. I would like to see where is the Biden administration. We need leadership. We need you in power to send the message to those thugs that they cannot do that to our people. So I would like to hear what is this, this administration doing about those two, those two situations? Thank you very much, Representative Salazar, and it's Brian Nichols. Uh, the, uh, we have raised these issues privately and publicly many, many times with those governments. Uh, we have spoken out publicly. We have placed multiple rounds of uh, treasury and visa sanctions on senior officials in those governments. I have personally met with the family members of those who've been uh, imprisoned in Nicaragua and, and Cuba. We are working uh, diligently to raise these issues with partners. We've gotten scores of partner nations around Ortega the and tell him and tell Ortega and Murillo that there will be consequences for them to going back to the Somoza years. Can you say right now that this administration and your leadership will say to Daniel Ortega, you will pay for this? We've publicly said that, and more importantly, we've had the uh, majority of countries within the Organization of American States join on resolutions condemning the actions and the sham elections in Nicaragua. Uh, and we will continue not only to use our own voices, but to work with partners around the globe to condemn their actions. Okay, Under Secretary Nicholson, you are correct. And I apologize for not uh, pronouncing your name correctly. Now let's talk to uh, let's talk to Cuba, and let's talk to Venezuela. Let's talk to Venezuela. Thousands of Venezuelans that are trying to come in through the southern border are being sent back to Colombia. That is not happening to other nationalities. Why the Venezuelans are not receiving the same due process as other people that are trying to come in and claim for asylum? Why Venezuelans, yes, and other nationals, no. So uh, when countries, uh, when a national of a country has a residency uh, somewhere else, uh, the Department of Homeland Security uh, has the ability to repatriate them to a country where they previously enjoyed residency. And 1.8 million Venezuelans have residency in Colombia. Uh, and if they uh, entered the United How States irregularly, are living in Mexico that are, have residency in Mexico and they're still trying to come in. I'm not saying that one group is better than the other. All I'm saying is that everyone needs to be treated fairly and equally. And unfortunately, the Venezuelans are not. So that's why another before my time expires. Could you please give us, before the, the month is out, a report, the State Department, is how many Cubans and Venezuelans have been sent back versus other countries? Because you want to treat everyone fairly. Could you do that for me, yes or no? I'll certainly work with our colleagues in the Department of Homeland Security, which controls this process, uh, to get you the information you've requested. I thank you very much. And finally, you know that there is going to be a Summit of the Americas in June in Los Angeles. I would like to know that you commit in public through this hearing that you are the you, meaning the Biden administration is not going to invite Cuba, Venezuela or Nicaragua because it, it's it, we, we have doubts. And we would not like to see, we meaning the American people, would not like to see those three thugs on our territory. So, Congresswoman, the, the president controls the invitations for the summit, uh, so I, I can't take his prerogative. But what I will say is that democracy is a key tenet for this administration and reaching power and governing 
and democratically are yeah, crucial. But you know what happened? You had another summit of the Americas last month and you, the administration did not invite some of the Central American countries who are democratic, who have a presidential who has been elected by the people and they were not invited. So that's why I'm unconfused. Maybe that is not the only the only requirement to be a democratic country. So that's why I'm saying Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua, those thugs cannot come to time has expired. According to my understanding, that's why I'm asking you to see the Biden administration. General Lady's time has expired. I now recognize Representative Joaquin Castro of Texas, who's the chair of the subcommittee on international development.